Hi, this is the first video in a series of about an, a new project that I'm embarking on. It's a very exciting project, but it's not going to be quick. Like several of the things I've got on the go, it's going to take quite a long time, and this is probably the, the biggest of the lot. I've decided to install a line shaft in my workshop in France. Now, the whole workshop, as you may have seen in other videos, is not huge, and so... As far as a line shaft goes, it's going to be pretty small, but nevertheless, I do think that um, it will be nice to have a line shaft in here. Um, there's these nice big oak trusses which will form the main supports for the shaft and counter shafts. And I've got some machines which are suitable for running on a line shaft, such as the vintage Swiss seven headed mill there, the tiny little bark number zero that you can see over there in the corner. That can be reconverted back to flat belt pulleys, and the Wisconsin horizontal mill, um, plus the vintage French drill press. These can all run on uh, a line shaft, uh, very suitable for that, um, even though it's not strictly necessary. I just think it'll be a nice thing to do. So I'll show you how far I've got with this. It's a combination, really. In rural France, such as um, was used elsewhere in the world, in the UK, United States, probably all over the Western world at one time, a lot of flat belt pulleys were made out of wood. Um, they were probably cheaper, easier to make and lighter, and I guess it's a, um, a technology that predates the Industrial Revolution. So here's a typical example of one lying on the, the bench. Um, I'm treating these with um, some xylophene, or xylophen as the French call it, a water-based wood preserver. Now the pulleys may have some uh, animal glue um, holding the pieces of wood together in some cases, um, which doesn't stand up very well to water apparently, but I'm just um, going easy with it and it doesn't seem to um, have any ill effects so far. Um, there's quite a lot of woodworm holes in most of these pulleys, unsurprisingly, but the xylophen should sort that out. And um, so already I feel I'm kind of preserving something here um, for posterity. Um, so you'll see I've written on each pulley in chalk where, where I've got them, different places. Um, and where, when, when I know, um, in cases where I know I've written on them, what it was used for as well. So that one there came from an old uh, cider press, for example. So I'll do another video on, on the structure of a wooden pulley, just to let you see that. So I won't go into any more detail here, but there they are, all stacked up. I've got nine of these all together, plus, well, including this big beauty here, which is 94 centimetres in diameter. I can't see me using that. I think it's just going to be far too big, but that would make an impressive object just hanging on a wall once it's been spruced up a little bit. It's in very good condition too. The other main source of equipment for the line shaft is this, which I purchased. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a tick leak off. Um, which I purchased recently, um, a few months ago. And you'll see that it's got PEX written on it. Um, that's because I'm told that this gear belonged to the PEX sock factory in Leicester, which I understand was at one time the biggest factory making socks in the UK. So you've got rural French cider making pulleys and British sock making pulleys, and it's going to be quite an eclectic line shaft. So just to go into a bit more detail on what we've got here from PEX, this is much more... Um, typical, I guess, of line shafting. It's uh, it's made of metal, not wood. Um, but you've got these nice hangers here. I'll pull one out just to let you have a look at it. Quite heavy, cast iron. There we go. Got three of these, and they're very nicely made, beautiful things. And you can see that there are four screws coming in towards a centre. And in the centre is this bearing here, which uh, contains a ball race. It's not plain bearings on this, it's ball bearings. And these uh, are adjustable. The four screws let you tweak the position a little bit so that if you don't get your uh, hanger set up with perfect alignment, then you can do some post-installation adjustment to line it all up. Very important that it's lined up properly, because if it's not, nothing's going to run right. Um, we've got three basically three different types of pulleys with the, 
the, the, the PEX line shaft. There's this, they're all split as well, which is great. There's that, which is pressed steel. You can see it's all flat steel pressed, and even this rim is just kind of bent over out of flat steel sheet. You've got these, which are, I'm going to walk around because it's too awkward to get past that bar. Bear with me. Just a bar, a, a line shaft sticking out from a bench. It means I have to walk right around the, the bench. But there we go. We have these which are fabricated. See with the, the spokes welded into a rim. They're a bit more heavy duty than the, the pressed steel ones. And finally, there's this one here. I'm not going to lift it out, but basically it's a it's cast iron pulley. Uh, it's quite similar in design to many others. Um, I'll show you, rather than pull that one out because it's all heavy, I'll um, show you this one. This is a French cast iron pulley, but the, this is bigger, but again, this is a beauty. Um, but the, the cast iron one from PEX is similar in design to that, four straight spokes. Um, so, okay, and uh, just to finish off on the the British gear, the PEX gear, there's this as well, this massive thing here, which is a another welded pulley, sorry, another cast pulley with a, a, a gang of um, V-belt pulleys attached and a bearing. I'm not going to be able to use that, it's too heavy and it's, as far as I can see it's not really suited to my purposes, that, that particular drive conversion arrangement, but um, so I, I made a brief start in trying to take the, the big pulley off the end and it did not want to budge and um, I've seen a v video by Keith Rucker in which he has a hell of a time trying to get a pulley off a off of a shaft um, and uh, I have a, a funny feeling that I might end up having a similar experience but um, he got there in the end so maybe I will too um, and then there's other iron pulleys basically this little one here is nice, it's got curved spokes which is quite elegant again that came from another cider press and then there's this massive thing here which has got a big round flange on it um, and it's very heavy um, which came from some kind of a mill for, for milling cattle feed apparently so very agrarian stuff you get here in rural France so again um, I may not use all of these pulleys. Um, I'd never intended to buy so many, but I got the opportunity to buy the PEX set after I'd collected up some of the, the wooden ones, so I ended up with quite a lot. But as I've seen somewhere else on the internet, someone said, um, you can have a hundred pulleys, but you might still not be able to find one that's got a hole in the middle that's the right size. Um, so apart from a bit of um, sleeving and boring out and so on, um, that may well prove to be the case. If I'm left with a surplus at the end, well, I'll do something else with them. Maybe sell them, maybe keep them. I don't know, but that's going to be quite a while away. Um, finally, yeah, just the line shafts themselves. This one's uh, the one from PEX. You can see that upside down there, but there's two of the, the ball races for the other two um, hangers. And on the floor there, we've got... We've got... French line shaft, very similar, different diameters. I've still got to check it all out, match it all up to the, the pulleys as best I can and see what I've got there. Some of these have got bearings on them, uh, again, ball bearings. So there's plenty here for me to be playing around with. It's going to be great fun, as long as I'm patient and take my time. By the way, it might seem a bit OCD to... Um, put uh, chalk uh, writing on each one, saying where it came from and so on. But there is a kind of history to these things, and I'm interested in that. Um, and, you know, eventually I'd like to be able to say, well, this pulley came from such and such, and that shaft came from such and such. But also, it just helps to orientate me to the different things that I've bought, and their different sizes and, and so on. It's a, a little map of my, um, my uh, buying of these bits and pieces. By the way, I will do um, more detailed videos about all of these components, the pulleys, the shafts, the bearings, hangers and so on, um, in due course. This is just the overview, as the title of the video suggests. Now, just the overall design of the system. 
there are these two kind of large oak trusses, each consisting of two timbers. They come out of the wall, spaced about, I don't know, three quarters of a metre apart at one end, and coming down to join each other at the other. There are two trusses like that. They're bearing a lot of uh, wood up there just now, but um, obviously that wood will all have to come down for the line shaft, but um, all in good time. But basically, the plan is that there are going to be three shafts altogether. At this end will be the main line shaft, which will be driven by a motor down on the ground. Um, in the middle, there will be one counter shaft. And at the right, there will be a second counter shaft. And I'm going to show you in a minute um, the positionings of each of these three shafts. Um, there are two trusses that are about three metres apart. Um, so each of the shafts will be borne on, on, uh, on these two trusses. So here it is in the form of this sketch. The motor, M, at the bottom left, drives the main line shaft, L, which is on the left-hand side, and that's uh, supported on some of the hangers, two hangers, but the hangers are not suspended, they're mounted standing on the bottom truss, so that um, we get more height there. Otherwise the hangers would bring the, the shaft on the pulleys down far too low. Um, that drives the first counter shaft C1, which is again mounted on top of the bottom beam, but using pillow blocks, not hangers. And in turn that drives counter shaft C2, which again is mounted on pillow blocks. Um, but these are underneath the beam, suspended. So because that doesn't have the support of the beam, because it's hanging rather than sitting on the beam, C2 will have to be a lighter duty shaft, um, perhaps running smaller machines. Uh, this clearly isn't to scale. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's just a rough sketch at this point in time. All the sizes of the pulleys and so on will have to be worked out properly for the speeds and everything. The, there are two trusses, the, the, the wooden oak trusses are here as you can see are in green and um, there are two of these in the workshop and they're three meters apart so basically we're talking about three shafts just over three meters long each the shafts will will come out further than the beams so that a pulley can be mounted on the ends of the shafts which um, will foul the, the beams just to give a bit more uh, flexibility um, I hope that gives a, an idea uh, thanks for watching I'll see you later